A little disclaimer, the presentation was prepared for the MHTTC network under a cooperative agreement with SAMHSA, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. All material except that taken directly from copyrighted sources is in the public domain and, be and may be copied without permission from SAMHSA or the authors. Citation of the source is appreciated. Um, at the time of this presentation, Eleanor McCants Katz served as SAMHSA Assistant Secretary. The opinions expressed herein are the views of the speakers and do not reflect the Office of the Department of Human Services or SAMHSA. So we are, as you know, we scheduled the second institute to land right before a winter season, right before a couple national holidays that many of us observe. We know that this time of year can bring up loss, grief, and the presence of absence. Our colleague and grief series virtual learning institute faculty, Doug Smith, helps us start today with some supportive strategies that we can use for ourselves and with those of us we serve to navigate the grief we may encounter during this season. So Doug comes to us with a wealth of experience and I am going to turn it over to him now. Uh, thank you, PJ. Um, as PJ um, mentioned in the introduction that uh, these holiday times can often be times in which uh, our grieving uh, is quite intense uh, as we um, mourn, uh, grieve uh, the physical presence of uh, loved ones during these times of uh, celebration. I'd like to look at this morning as a form of meditation to look at how we might reframe this time uh, to look at it not as a time in which uh, we are mourning the loss of a loved one, but a time in which we are celebrating not only the holiday, but celebrating the ongoing presence of people who have died uh, still with us in some form, uh, if not in that physical form. Uh, Jack Lemon uh, made uh, the comment once, he said, death ends a life, not a relationship. We have these ongoing relationships with people uh, that have died. It might be uh, through thoughts, might be through memories, through dreams, it might be uh, sitting in a chair that she used to sit in or listening to some music that we used to dance to or uh, going to a restaurant that he used to go to. Uh, any number of ways in which we can experience uh, the departed uh, with us uh, an ongoing experience. And that ongoing experience can even be physical in many ways. We, we look into a mirror and we say, oh, I've got my mom's eyes. I've got my dad's hair. I've got my mom's smile. I've got my dad's laugh. And so people that have died are, are not only with us uh, through those thoughts and those memories and those dreams, but they're also in many ways physically present with us. And I think we need to look at these holidays, reframe the holidays as a time of uh, celebrating the ongoing presence uh, with people, that ongoing relationship that Jack Lemon refers to when he says, death ends a life, but not a relationship. There's a poet uh, named Tanya Lord who's written a poem on grief and the, the last verse of that poem goes like this. This year, let's celebrate the love that still lives on. Let's talk and remember those who left but are not gone. Let me read those words again. This year, let's celebrate the love that still lives on. Let's talk and remember those who left but are not gone. Let me give two um, recommendations for practices 
uh, that we can do in the holiday uh, to remind us of this ongoing presence. First, let me talk about a practice that we can use with a meal holiday, a holiday that focuses upon a meal, whether that holiday be uh, Thanksgiving, uh, Passover, uh, the day of Eid after Ramadan. Uh, but let me focus on Thanksgiving. And many times when we have these special meals, we bring out a special tablecloth to put on the table for that special meal. And if you don't have that as part of your tradition, find a tablecloth now that you'll designate as a special uh, tablecloth for these um, holiday meals. And when you have this Thanksgiving, you have everybody that is seated at the table, somewhere on the tablecloth, they sign their name so that every time that tablecloth is brought out, we've got not only the signatures of those that are seated there today, but also the signatures of everyone who has sat there before. Um, to show that this person is still with us, this person is still sharing in this meal, this person is still a part of our celebration because of their ongoing presence with us. If you want to start the tradition and include somebody that has already died, just find a letter or a document in which uh, you have their signature and trace their signature onto the tablecloth to signify to everybody that is around the table, this person is still with us. This person is even at this table now sharing in this meal through our thoughts, our memories, uh, our dreams, and even our physical reminders through our bodies that this person uh, is a part of us. With the first gift-giving holiday, uh, whether that be Christmas or Hanukkah or a, a birthday or an anniversary, uh, and let's look at Christmas. I'd like to recommend this for Christmas is that uh, a few days before Christmas, every surviving member of the family uh, goes off alone and thinks about what they're most thankful for having received from the person who has died. And usually this is an intangible gift. It, this person taught me about courage, what courage is all about. Or this person uh, told me about how to enjoy life to the very end. Or this person taught me about what it means to have uh, unconditional positive regard, but just write on a piece of paper what you're most thankful for having received from this person. Put the paper in a box, wrap the box, and put that present along with all the other presents under the tree. And then the first present that everyone opens up and shares with the rest of the family is what they're most thankful for having received from the person that has died. And this shows uh, to us and to the rest of the family, this person is still with us. This person is even still giving to us. It is just in a different way now. It's just in a different way. And so those are two practices that we can use uh, in the holidays to acknowledge this ongoing presence, to acknowledge uh, Jack Lemmon's quotation that death ends a life, but not a relationship, and to emphasize uh, that uh, stanza from uh, Tanya Lord's poem, this year, let's celebrate the love that still goes on. Let's talk and remember those who left but are not gone. Uh, thank you. I wish you all the best these holidays and uh, celebrate these holidays for that ongoing presence. Thank you.